Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss how to spot an expensive suit or a quality suit, and I discuss the 15 hallmarks that help you identify one. No, I'm not talking about fit. If you want to learn more about how a suit should fit, please check out this series here. In that same vein, if you want to learn how to spot an inexpensive, cheap suit, please check out this video. One. Take a look at the label. A suit label can tell you a lot. Whether it's a brand that produces off-the-rack suits or higher-end made-to-measure suits, if you know the brand, you know exactly what kind of quality level it's at. For example, for Ralph Lauren, there is Ralph Lauren Purple Label, which is their highest line and the most expensive one. Black Label is less expensive and tailored with a trimmer fit. Polar Ralph Lauren is again less expensive. And then they have lower-end lines like Chaps from Ralph Lauren, which is really low end. On the other hand, Double RL has kind of a vintage aesthetic and it's also a little more expensive. So understanding the brands that you're interested in and whose aesthetic you like is paramount in identifying an expensive suit. If you're into vintage clothing, if you're lucky sometimes, you can find custom or bespoke suits at tailors. Now sometimes these come from different countries. Now if it says custom tailor or bespoke tailor, chances are it's a higher end suit. Also, the address can help. If something says Savile Row on it or Via Monte Napoleone in Milan, you know it comes from an expensive street and chances are it's an expensive garment. On most bespoke suits, you cannot see the label right away. Therefore, you have to look on the inside pockets. Don't be fooled if you can't find any composition labels or fabric labels, because most bespoke suits won't tell you what fabric it is or what material composition the lining is made of. So if you've looked inside the pockets and inside the entire jacket and you can't find any care labels or material labels, chances are it's a very expensive suit. The second thing you can look at is the rounded corners. On a custom-made suit such as this one, the tailor took very great care to round the corners so they wear not prematurely. You will see the same rounding at the tips of the lapels which is where most companies do it. However, they don't do it at the bottom of the jacket or at the ends of the sleeves. Of course, that alone is not a quality hallmark, but if the corners are rounded, it just tells you that the rest is of high quality as well. The third thing to look in detail is the so-called pig stitching. It's a slight stitching along the edge of the suit, and traditionally it was only been able to make by hand. So back in the day, you can just look at a suit, and if it was there, it was a quality suit, and if it was gone, it wasn't. Because of that, some nifty Germans developed a machine called the AMF machine, and it creates a stitch that looks like handmade from afar, but generally it is very obvious. You can really spot it when you turn it around and look at the stitching from the back. Traditionally, a suit from England or let's say Germany had a very subtle stitching that was only noticeable upon closer inspection. Italian suits, on the other hand, may have more flashy pig stitching, and usually you find it in the areas of the lapel and the collar all the way down the front quarters. Sometimes you can also find pig stitching along the back seams as well as the sleeves, and if you encounter that, you know it's a quality suit because that's not something that's done on inexpensive garments. Four, look at the stitching on the inside. A high-end suit will usually have a fair amount of handwork in it. That means the lining is sewn in by hand. You can check it on the sleeves, you can check the armhole, which should be set in by hand, and you can look at the little details and see whether it's a hand stitch or a machine stitch. The character of a hand stitch is that is slightly irregular. The hand stitch is more flexible than a machine stitch, and because of that, it moves with you, which makes you look better and feel more comfortable. In the same way, when you have a suit in front of you, you can flip over the lapel and look for little pick stitching in the back. That is done when you have a interlined canvas and it gives you that lapel roll that's so desirable. On a cheaper suit, you get flat ironed lapels and that's not what a tailored garment is. Sometimes you can see the stitching very clearly. Other times you can just slightly feel it in slight dimples from the back, but it's hard to see because either the thread is too fine or it's the same color or it's just not so obvious. High-end expensive suits should always have either a full canvas or no canvas at all that is all sewn. There should be no glue involved, not even a half canvas suit. To learn more about that, please check out our video here. Five, look underneath the collar. Pop open your collar and look carefully how it's sewn on. A cheaper or inexpensive suit 
will be machine sewn versus a quality high-end expensive suit will be hand sewn. With a little practice, you can determine what is a hand sewn color because again, you see irregular stitches, oftentimes you see finer stitches, sometimes you see contrast stitches, whereas a machine made color is usually with a triangle stitch or just a very regular stitch that's very stiff and not flexible. The sixth thing to look at is pattern matching. A high-end suit will have a matched pattern. It's easiest to check that if you have, let's say, a windowpane suit, maybe a Prince of Wales check with an overplaid or a striped suit. On a solid suit, it's hard to see that skill because there's no pattern that you can really match. On a suit like I'm wearing here right now with a fine herringbone, some tailors, even if they're very high-end, they don't pay that much attention to pattern matching, so it's not a good way to distinguish it. However, on a striped suit, you can look at the stripes on the pockets, for example, in the front. If the flaps line up with the lines of the torso, it's likely a very high quality suit. Some tailors even line up the stripes in the back of the collar with your back or on the gorge, which is the part between the collar and the lapel. Now, you can have an expensive suit that doesn't have matched stripes there. However, on the side of the pants, for example, you should always find a nicely matched pattern. On top of that, the back of the suit should also have a nicely matched pattern. And if you have a window pane, it should be aligned and the stripes should be symmetrical. So these are all good points to look at the pattern matching because on a high-end suit, these are usually matched. On a cheaper ones, they're definitely not. Seven, look at the buttonholes. A high-end expensive suit will always have handmade buttonholes that are a piece of art. If they're machine made, they should be of the highest quality, have a very fine stitch, have maybe a gimp on them, and you can sometimes see that on bespoke suits, but most of the time, it's a hand-stitched buttonhole. How can you identify one? Turn it on the back side, and you will see a slightly irregular stitch versus on the front, it looks very regular. Also, sometimes it is raised, such as, for example, on a Milanese buttonhole, it's a finer silk thread with a gimp thread underneath, and it just looks very different than a regular bespoke buttonhole. On the other hand, a cheaper suit oftentimes has fraying buttonholes, the stitching is not as fine, it's very regular in the front and back, and that's how you can identify if you're an expensive suit or a cheap suit. Eight, look at the fabric reserve. Sometimes an expensive suit has a half lining or is completely unlined, and then you can actually look in the back seam in the center if there's a fabric reserve. You know you can only really test that if you hold it against the light source if there's a lining, but an easier way to check the fabric reserve is the pants. Just flip them over and look at the sides and see if there's some fabric reserve. At least, you want at least two to three centimeters or one inch. Sometimes there's two inches of reserve and that shows you it was made by a quality maker because cheaper suits usually save on the fabric and it doesn't give you any room to expand or tailor the suit. Nine, look for Grinze. If you have an Italian made garment or anything from Southern Europe, chances are you'll see a kind of wavy pattern of fabric in the back. You sometimes can see it on shirts, but also on suits as well as sleeved hats. What I mean by that is a slight puckering which is produced by adding more fabric to, let's say, the sleeve hat or the back and the shoulder. Some people like that because I think it adds a nonchalant sprezzatura element to their garments. Other people who are maybe of a Viennese school, maybe a German tailoring school or an English tailoring school think it is not proper. In any case, if you see it, you know it's a more expensive garment because usually that's done by hand and it cannot be done in a factory really and therefore it's a good hallmark to see it but it's not very reliable because it's only seen in southern European or Italian suits. 10. Look at the buttons. A high-end suit has high quality buttons. The standard is horn buttons and sometimes if you have several row houses they only have two holes versus the majority of all suits, including some other bespoke suits, have four holes. That being said, if you find two hole buttons that have a slight indent, chances are it is a high-end suit. Even if you find four holes, it can be a high-end suit. It can be made from Corozo, such as you see it in Italy a lot, or Horn. Sometimes people even go with Mother of Pearl, even precious metals such as gold. The hallmark of a horn button or a carozo or a matter of pearl button is that they're not consistent. Whereas cheap plastic buttons often look exactly the same. Those will also break, versus horn buttons are very unlikely to break, just like carozo. 
So look for the holes and inconsistencies, and if you can find that, it's likely an expensive suit. 11, you have to look at the shoulder construction and how it falls. For example, when you combine this side with a sleeve, you have fabric ends on both sides. If you fold them both towards the shoulder, you create a shirt style shoulder, which is also known as spalla camicia in Italian. It's a very distinctive look, and if you see that, you know it is most likely a custom bespoke garment that is expensive and not a cheap off-the-rack suit. Basically, all off-the-rack suits, and also some higher-end suits, have the shoulder end folded this way and a sleeve end folded that way. It gives you a less pronounced look of the shoulder seam, and sometimes you find people who fold both of them towards the sleeve side, and they may even add a little bit of extra layer in there to get a slightly elevated shoulder seam sleeve head, which then drapes nicely down on the sleeve. It's just a very nice look, and you need a little bit of experience with that because it's not easy to spot for a beginner, but once you're more into suits, you can immediately see what kind of shoulder it is. 12, look for material labels and lining labels. A high-end suit brand, such as Ralph Lauren Purple Label, will have material labels with 100% wool. They may give you super numbers, they may have cashmere in it. The lining is usually made out of cupro or bamberg, maybe silk or cotton, but never polyester or nylon. Even viscose is a lower end option, so look for these materials that are good. If you can't find a material label, just as I said before, chances are it's a bespoke suit and it's an expensive one. 13. Look at the trousers waistband. If you have a pair of Hollywood trousers, that means there's no separate detached waistband, but the pants are just tailored all the way up and either you have suspender buttons or belt loops. If you encounter that, you know you have an expensive suit because that's not something that's made in a commercial off the rack or even a cheap suit. To learn more about hallmarks of quality pants and how pants should fit, please check out this video here. 14, look for monograms on the inside, maybe some secret pockets, but the inside of a suit will often tell you if there were customizations done. And if that's the case, chances are it was a more expensive suit than something that has no customizations whatsoever. Now that you know how to spot an expensive suit, make sure to watch the video on how to spot a cheap suit because some of the hallmarks are similar, some are different, but it will definitely help you to always find a good suit and leave behind the crap suit. On top of that, we have lots of video about suits, so head over to our channel and watch a hundred versus a thousand dollar suit, five hundred versus five hundred thousand dollars, or how a suit should fit. I promise you, if you watch all of these video, you'll be a suit expert in no time. In today's video, I'm wearing a vintage bespoke suit that wasn't tailored for me, but that I found at a vintage suit using those hallmarks I just mentioned in the video. It's tailored in a 1930s silhouette with wider lapels with a low gorge, it has nice three patch pockets, it has no vent, the fabric is a wonderful tobacco brown small herringbone that is rich in color and just beautiful. The fabric drapes well, the pants are cut a little wider, and there was enough fabric reserve in there to make it work for my big thighs. There was also enough fabric so I could have a nice cuff added, which is something you will only get from bespoke garments because cheaper suits just won't have enough fabric. My shirt was custom made for me from a nice cotton twill flannel. It has a classic collar. I'm pairing it with a purple matter silk tie with a small paisley pattern from Fort Belvedere, which you can find at our shop. The pocket square is likewise matter silk with a larger pattern. It picks up the tones of green and purple and just creates a harmonious look. It's also from Fort Belvedere, just like my over-the-calf socks, which are purple and teal. You can find all Fort Belvedere accessories in our shop here. The cufflinks I'm wearing are vintage. It's a sterling silver pair made of cloisonne enamel with a two-tone pattern. The ring that I'm wearing is sterling silver. It's blue, it works with the cufflinks and the shirts. And the shoes I'm wearing are chocolate brown double monks from Shoe Passion that I pair with a matching belt and a silver buckle. I'm also wearing a tiger's eye tie clip which goes well with my suit and contrasts the tie. To learn more about tie clips and tie bars, please check out these videos here. And sign up for a free email newsletter so you get free ebooks with how to's and lots of knowledge right to your inbox. Thank you.